Lost media can be a blessing and a curse. Sometimes it could be a project that leaves you wondering as to how it got made, and other times it could be a project that makes you wonder as to why the project didn't get made. Today we're going to be discussing a movie that unfortunately falls under the latter category. What's that, you might ask? Well, take a look for yourself and I'll explain the details on what possibly could have been DreamWorks' next big hit. <laughs> What you just saw was footage from the animated short Bilby, which was at one point supposed to be an animated film by the name of Larrikins. DreamWorks had started working on this film back in 2016 after their merger with Universal. At the time, it was a great opportunity for DreamWorks as they were now undergoing a change that would allow them to release way more films than ever before. As good as it sounds, things were actually slipping up behind the scenes. Movies were constantly getting switched around the schedule and it was obvious that there was just no concrete plans for the future of the studio. How to Train Your Dragon 3 was set for a 2018 release, and The Croods 2 was scheduled for a 2017 release. As we all know, these films ended up suffering from long delays in scheduling. In fact, at the time of me recording this video, The Croods 2 is set to release in September of next year. That's a whole two years after its original release date. Fortunately, the films that ended up taking their spots are all, for the most part, quality films, and they do do the studio justice despite how rough the development cycle was. But the real question is, were those films really worth the loss that was? was Larrikins? Larrikins was intended to be a musical starring the likes of Hugh Jackman, Naomi Watts, Rose Byrne, and Ben Mendelsohn, all incredibly talented actors that have recorded lines of dialogue for the movie that sadly we'll never get to hear. I can imagine how great the music could have been had it actually been made. Currently, Disney is the only one making animated musicals, so it would be nice to see some competition there. I mean, the last thing music related that I think they've done was Trolls, and is that really a musical? I mean, it was just pop songs that were kind of thrown in and sung by the characters, which is pretty much done in every animated movie anyway. The title Larrikins is actually Aussie slang for Maverick, or Rebel, and if you notice the entire cast is Australian. That's right, you heard it correctly, DreamWorks was working on an Australian musical. Talk about getting creative. This would have been an excellent setting and genre for them to tackle as it's something that we really haven't seen before. I think the last time an animated movie took place in Australia, at least one that I can remember, was The Rescuers Down Under, which is a great film on its own right and criminally underrated might I say, but I do think we are overdue for having another movie take place in an Australian setting. Now in the short Bilby, the main character's name is Perry, and Bilby is actually the name of the animal he's based off. From what I could tell, Bilbies are described as like a mixture between a rabbit and a bandicoot. See guys, not everything in Australia is out to kill you. I mean, look at this cute little guy. But that doesn't mean things aren't out to kill him. In the film's synopsis, they describe Perry as being uptight and anxious, as he's lived most of his life inside his family's burrow, all until a series of events force him to leave the burrow, thus sending him on a musical adventure with a kangaroo named Red, and of course, in Hollywood fashion, he has to save the girl of his dreams, a female Bilby named Bonnie. Red is described as a hard-edged and unemotional type. He thinks everything is a bit of a joke and doesn't really get along with authority. Along their journey, Perry learns how to be brave and Red learns how to be more caring. But what's a movie without an antagonist? In the film, there are these monsters known as Silva Lineolists. I don't know how to say it, so I'll say Sivas for short, as that's what the director calls them. I tried searching for what the term could mean, but it seems as though it's something made up for the film itself. To quote the director Tim Minchin, he says, It's an Australian story, and I'm writing very much as an Australian, writing about Australia. This sort of passion being poured in just makes me want to see it even more. You can tell the crew they have was doing everything in their power to be authentic to the land that they were portraying. They were even going as far as to add in some Australian politics in the film as well. One of the songs in the film was titled Proper Aussie. It's sung by a character in the film named Howard. He is a crocodile who's a bureaucratic bully in charge of the river that our heroes have to cross. 
He sees his job as preventing non-native species from spreading. There's no sugarcoating here, as the film treats the political elements in the same way that Zootopia does. It's a great method of adding social commentary into your film without it having to come across as annoying or just out of place. Of course it's not needed, but it's nice to hear that the amount of thought was going into little details like that. It's a real shame too, because this film really could have been something special for the studio. Or who knows, maybe it could have been a huge pile of crap. Either way, I still wish I could have seen it. Because of the development hell that was Larrikin's, DreamWorks Animation did not put out a single film in 2018. That's the first time they've ever skipped a year since 1999. So why did this happen? Well get this, DreamWorks thought that creatively it just wasn't working out well, coincidentally when their new executives were hired on board. If you ask me, I think that wasn't the case. Its cancellation had to be the result of the new executives as the reaction Tim gave afterwards is rather bittersweet to say the least. When asked about how he felt, he said, Hi everyone, I've recently been working in three different continents, missing my kids a lot, sleeping too little, and not playing enough piano. And then a couple of days ago, the animated film to which I've dedicated the last four years of my life was shut down by the new studio executives. The only way I know how to deal with my impotent fury and sadness is to subject members of the public to the spectacle of me getting drunk and playing ballads I suspect won't be very funny. I won't be doing any stand-up, and I might act a bit bitter and spoiled. On the upside, the tickets are as cheap as I can make them, and I might be tempted to buy a round. Come and drink with me, my friends, and we'll see what happens. Love, Tim. So after hearing all this, I want to know what do you all think. Was it really creative differences that brought this film down? Or do you think it was the top dogs at DreamWorks? I for one think that it was a mistake on DreamWorks' part. From what I could tell in all the research I did, it didn't seem to be any creative differences and if there were, I think it had to be with the executives themselves. I think they didn't see the movie as something they would foresee DreamWorks making with their future properties. Aside from How to Train Your Dragon 3, if you notice the movies they've been making recently have been targeting a much younger demographic. It really seems like they're not really trying to be a competitor to Pixar anymore. Based on their upcoming lineup of movies, it just doesn't seem like there's much more creative flow going anymore. It seems like it's all about the cash grabs and all about what the little kids want to see, and not so much about making a good movie. But what do I know? I'm just some guy geeking out on the internet. For all I know, the studio's doing just fine and the execs know what they're doing. But for me, I'm just a little worried about them. Mm -hmm. 